here at Medora Campground in Medora, North Dakota. And this is a campground review. Make sure to stay to the end to find out about the one star reviews. Are they confirmed or are they busted? busted. General impressions. This is a grid style campground with lots of sights and a bit of dust. The cost for us was $79. They did not offer any discounting. Honestly, for this price, we would expect a little bit more space between the campsites. Campground. This campground was mostly red dirt and dust. Everywhere. It was a bit of gravel mixed in, but it was dusty when it was dry and muddy when it was wet. There are a few large trees in the older section, but the newer section has none and it is almost entirely full sun. We're in site number 603. Our campsite was a pull through and it was mostly dirt. The space between the sites was very narrow. Our campsite was mostly level and it had full hookups with 50 and 30 amps, so hashtag 50. They do have a variety of sites of different lengths and not all have 30 and 50 amps, so you're definitely going to want to make sure you check before you book. At this campsite, you do pay extra for the 50 amp and for the extra length. The sites have a picnic table and a grill, but no fire ring. There is a community fire ring at the front office. They also offer propane refill, a dump station, and potable water refill stations. The campground does have free Wi-Fi, and it is pretty fast. However, it's very, very inconsistent. So we're going to say it's okay for light Googling and emailing, but not really for streaming. Starlink has a nice view of the sky and is good for streaming. Ryzen was a bit slower, but it is still good enough for streaming. The noise level at this campground was rough. They were dumping dumpsters before 8.30 in the morning. It, it was loud, like really loud. It was. It was like inside the RV, it sounded like thunder. Girl. Kind of loud. And like, every, boom. <laughs> every single morning, not like once a week, like every single morning, there were dogs barking. <coughs> there was music playing loud throughout the night, people packing up or unpacking way after quiet hours. Um, um, fireworks at the musical. There were a lot of people riding loud motorcycles around, uh, train noise. This is probably one of the loudest RV parks that I think we've been in and it was not helped by the fact that there were so many people cramped into such a small space. Yep. Even during the quietest part of the day, which was about midday, like right about now, there's still like a constant hum of noise. Amenities. They do have two bathhouses located in the campground. They have multiple stalls and they were clean. Dumpsters were easily located throughout the park. They have a laundry room with seven washers and four dryers that are the jumbo dryer size. It's $3, $3 to wash and 50 cents for 10 minutes of drying. They also have a nice facility with a laundry sink and a water bottle refill station. That's, That's nice. kind of bougie. Oh yeah. The campground does not have a pool, although there is a city-owned pool really close by that is a $5 entrance fee per person. It's actually right outside the campground entrance. They also have a playground, basketball, and cornhole. Dog friendliness. The campground is dog friendly. There is, however, no off-leash dog area inside the campground. The city does own one right next to the pool. It is right outside the campground, but they've let the weeds grow about three feet high in there. Unfortunately, if we let Kayla in there, we'd lose her. <laughs> we only see the tail. <laughs> there are multiple dog pickup stations in the park and lots of places to dump your poop. And the best part about the pickup stations is they're fully stocked. They're fully stocked. <laughs> Camp store. They do have a small camp store with limited items like RV essentials, a few camping items and some swag. Camp staff interactions. We have had multiple interactions with the camp staff. They have been super friendly and made us feel right at home. Additional information. <laughs> they accept package <laughs> delivery at this campground. We hope that that's still true after we leave. We've tried our best not to take advantage, but we really appreciate the fact that we're able to stock up because we're going to be on the road for a while and not be able to get packages. Now on to our favorite part where we get to bust or confirm those one-star reviews you find on Google. 
But before we get to that, please make sure to like and subscribe. It's free and it really helps our channel continue to grow. Cecil writes, we wanted to stay here a few nights, but the old lady was so rude to us. No parking here. Can't park here. There was no sign saying it was forbidden to park. Well, Cecil, all we have to say is no parking for you. <laughs> we parked at the front and we never got yelled at. So we're calling this busted. Deidre S. writes, this is the worst campsite by far. The sites were very tight. The bathroom facilities were old and run down. Cleaning happened every day between 8.30 and 10, which caused a pileup of lines. They brag about expanding, but they should update their facilities. For the price, I was expecting more. Lynn H. writes, great location, friendly staff, small cramped sites, and restrooms are not very clean. Paige T. writes, I visited a few months ago, extremely tight spots, does the job if you have no other options. As far as the bathrooms being old and run down and dirty, they were fairly updated and clean enough to use, so we are saying busted. busted. As far as the campsites being tight, we're definitely going to have to say confirmed. confirmed. And Powell M. says, this was like Mordor, so hot in open space. And to that we have to say, you shall not pass. Although it was very hot in a couple of days we were here, we would not call it Mordor. For right now, we're calling this busted. Now we're moving on to love it or hate it. We'll start off with the negative things we have about this campground and then finish up with the positives. All right, Mike, lay it on me. Tell me what was your biggest hate about this campground. It has to be the layout of this campground. It is the most ill-conceived layout that I think I've ever seen. The bathrooms are just kind of scattered. There's one over there. And they're there's both over there. Both, yeah, they're both over there. There's and there's none in all of the all of the rows. Yeah. Multiple, like half the campground is back behind us. Mm -hmm. No bathrooms back there. And there's no walkways that allow people to flow to where the bathrooms are. Because I mean, there's one right there. There's one right there for us. And that means that everybody is walking between our rig and what little space there is between the rig. They just walk between it all the time and it, it's very frustrating. Because even they don't want to walk down to the end and around. Right. And some of the rows, there's no place for even rigs to go around. You have to go all the way down and then back up if mm -hmm. you're on the wrong row. That's mm -hmm. definitely not well planned. It's just really bad design. They need some more pathways and walkways. So mine is the amount of space between our rigs yeah. or lack of space and when I say lack of space guys we've stayed at some close campgrounds but usually then it's like one or two are a little close and that's it no every single one is close here and when I say close this has got to be probably one of the closest we've been in the campgrounds nine feet between our RV and the people next to us we can't even fit our picnic table sideways. We had to shove our picnic table up against our slide so we can shimmy between their RV and our picnic table just to get up our steps. And the sewer lines run underneath the picnic table. So when I say lack of space, I mean supreme lack of space. And they could easily do with taking out every other uh, pad for people mm -hmm. to park, and that would be better. Made for a very unpleasant time here. Definitely. All right, so enough of the negative. Let's finish up with the positive. So what was your favorite part about this campground? My favorite part about this campground is how close it was to Theodore Roosevelt National Park. I mean, love that. You, I can't, love be, you can't be how close it is. It's right there. <laughs> it is. It's location, 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 right? I loved it. It was so bikeable, right? So we were able to bike into town. We were able to bike to the National Park. We, there was a bike path along the route to town as well, so it was a great way to see and explore. If you'd like to see other campgrounds that we've stayed at and that we liked or didn't like, check them out over here. Or if you'd like to see our adventures, what trouble we got into <laughs> while we were here, check it out up here.